light tanks are typically what you would assume to be light tanks. I mean, that is in the name after all. But what happens when you take a light tank and make it heavy? Well, that is exactly what the Alf Klaren's Panther actually has in this game, which is World of Tanks console. And today we are looking at this light tank in particular, one of my favorite light tanks. And in fact, one of my favorite vehicles in the game to just have a ton of fun without really having to think a whole lot and enjoy it at the same time. So with that being said, the Alf Klarung's Panzer Panther is essentially a Panther hull, which is a tier seven medium tank added at tier seven, but with essentially a much, much faster top speed limit and an engine to suit so that you can do things like what you're about to find out against tanks that definitely don't weigh as much, such as uh, 460 damage. Yeah, this tank basically takes no damage against other light tanks of the same tier and will deal hundreds, if not multiple hundreds. You're looking at upwards of 500 if you ram a light tank and we only had a partial collision on the little, uh, uh, I guess, LTG, which is the Soviet light tank, basically weighs nothing. Uh, the Alf Klarin's Panther Panther actually weighs, I believe, somewhere in the region of about 40 tons, which for a light tank doing 70 kilometers an hour is pretty weighty. And people will definitely run for the hills when they see a tank like this doing what it can do. And that's why I absolutely love this tank. You can have some fantastic games, both feeling like you can be relatively competitive with its main gun. It's a pretty good gun. And if you make your way into close quarter situations, you can find yourself actually able to ram people and find them in positions where they really can't do a lot to you. Now, that's exactly what we've done here. We've taken advantage push, trying to push forward. We've got a guy behind us who is going to find himself in a bit of a sticky situation for sure, as our team are going to just demolish him alongside us. So, so far we picked up 1600 damage and all we've done is ram a little LTG and got a couple of shots here and there, which is fantastic. It's what you want when you're playing in a light tank, jam pack full of action. And really this tank gets super, super good towards the mid and late stage games where you can find someone who's taking a little stroll off the uh, kind of chosen path and then end up ramming them for a absolutely inordinate amount of damage if you can get up your top speed and then single them out as a target. Now obviously we are running a full ramming build with all of the ramming perks and things to reduce our ramming damage um, such as spool liner, we have some of the equipment pieces that are going to do better uh, for that sort of situation. You can see me here just trying to track the IRL. I was just trying to keep him in one location. Um, but given how long we've kind of spent there, it's time to fall back down. And because we tracked him, we get all of the little bit of assistance that he had. The T28 HTC is actually pushing down, which is not the best play because he's about to find out that our teammates aren't complete bots and will hopefully remove him, which they do. And there you go, up to 2.38 thousand damage within, what, three minutes or three and a half minutes of the game starting with a decent chunk of assistance as well. So if you are not that interested in playing a super passive light tank in the typical light tanks fashion, then this one is definitely more up your street. And although it is a premium vehicle, you do have to pay money for it, which is unfortunate considering how much fun it is. It's a relatively cheap price because as a tier 7 vehicle, they're significantly cheaper than things like tier 8s, as well as the fact that because it's a tier 7 vehicle and a light tank as a tier 7 vehicle, it's even cheaper as well, which means you're probably paying on the region of about 6,000 gold for this vehicle at full price. But because it is a tank that is often sold at 50% discount, you can usually pick it up for about 3,000 gold, which is approximately, off the top of my head, about £9, something like that. Um, and so, yeah, a very, very, very fun tank to play. And I thought I'd highlight it in today's video. Now, we've got a couple of gameplays. This first one, obviously a very, very quick one, little introduction to what the tank is like. But obviously, every game doesn't go as well as this one. So let's actually have a look at some other games that we managed to have whilst playing in this tank. Now, in Live Oaks, uh, we are, of course, 
in a pretty good spot in terms of being a light tank. We should be able to have a pretty good game. It's quite open. It's quite open area where you can move around and uh, relatively flexible to a degree. Uh, and so we should be able to at least make it work. But obviously in a tank that is featured around being able to ram things, that's entirely how we're going to be playing it. And in doing so, how we've set up the actual vehicle itself is running it with all of the speed boost equipment. So both traction system and advanced powertrain as well to be able to get our top speed as high as possible so we can deal with those huge ramming damage rolls by ramming in at full speed as well as of course running at spool line as well to boost up our uh, kind of defense against ramming so that we don't take as much damage but also inflict more damage uh, to opponents uh, as well as all of the perks that we've kind of mentioned before in a lot of our perk builds and stuff like that so that's kind of how you run it it's almost like you take a Panzer 5 4 as a light tank at tier 7 um, and yeah it feels really really nice to do that Obviously, this setup right now, not ideal. There are, what, five tanks directly in front of me who are all pretty dangerous vehicles in all intents and purposes. Uh, but, of course, we want to be able to spot them. We are the light tank, so uh, we just want to basically make it as easy as possible for our team to remove their health. And it looks like the Tiger and some of these tanks might end up actually pushing towards us. Uh, but there's one key particular clip that I wanted to show you because... Yeah, you've seen me ram a light tank, but of course, what happens when you ram the heavier vehicles? Does it still work? Uh, and so the Tiger gets removed pretty quickly, gets, uh, by the looks of it, set on fire or Amaract or something like that. So he's removed very, very quickly. Uh, and now we've got a TS-5 who's been a bit of a pain on the ridgeline. Not particularly the nicest tank to come up against because... When we don't have that much penetration with our standard rounds, uh, the premium ammunition comes into effect. And although the premium ammo is pretty good, it also has a few key problems. Like, for example, it costs a lot of money to use this tank as a premium vehicle. But here's the ram that we're talking about. We dealt 300 damage in one go, and we finish off the T69. Now, that was a bit risky because, you know, we could have taken another hit from the T69, and we would have been out of the game. But at the end of the day, you've got to do it sometimes just for the fun of it. Uh, and of course, that's what this tank's all about. I'm not playing it to be the utmost top ability tank that we could possibly use in the game because we certainly wouldn't be running the full ramming build in it. Um, but yeah, you can definitely use it in that sort of way, which I think is a great kind of thing to do within the game. If you don't enjoy playing certain ways and you feel like tanks are forcing you into doing it, then maybe just think about the fact that you can play any tank in any way that you want. You don't have to play it how you think is optimal. It's down to you uh, to really make up your mind. Do you want to be more competitive on a overall sense or do you want to have a bit of fun? Uh, and I really want to kind of implore that to everyone who, who plays the game is that, yeah, you see me saying about what equipment you should use in certain tanks and how it's going to be the best one, but you don't have to follow it. You can use your own kind of... Uh, thoughts and processes but purely based on competitiveness the perks that i usually list are up there with some of the more uh, beneficial ones on in general but things like this i think it's great to have a bit of fun you're not really hurting anyone and often you can actually deal a lot more damage than you're going to take in a lot of your games so you can see here we're just putting a few into the vanguard he's now going to try and run away by the looks of it my terrible aim here coming into effect i've really uh, find the uh, elite controller a bit weird for playing uh, World of Tanks console for some reason. It definitely felt a lot different to the standard one, maybe because I just got used to uh, the sticks and maybe we have like some form of like stick drift or maybe it's just a little bit different. Uh, but it definitely feels weirder. We certainly find uh, aiming and stuff like that, maybe because the thumbsticks are slightly higher than the standard one. But either way, I digress. There's not really what we're on about in this video, but I thought I'd let you know either way. Um, but yeah, if you have good aim and you're playing in this tank and you know how to push people, it can be really, really good. Um, yeah, we picked up, what, 2.2k assistance and 1600 damage. We rammed an opponent for a bit of fun. And of course, now we're coming up from behind one of the other vehicles in this game, which is the Type 59-2. Now, I thought about ramming him, but we're going to die if we actually ram this guy, so I didn't really want to do that. So instead, we opt for just getting damage and... 
I'm not against it. I think it's a good idea. And there you go. We're up to 2.36 thousand damage with 2.18 thousand assistance so just over four and a half thousand combined damage in one game which i think is pretty good for a light tank in a mid-tier match where we are up against tier eight so another example of what this tank can do but there's still one more that i want to showcase uh, as part of this video and hopefully if you played it you let me know what you think of the Alf Glorings panzer panther whether you think it's good whether you think it's terrible i'd be interested to see what your thoughts are and do you actually play it like a ramming tank or do you play it like a traditional light tank uh, in the game and so let's jump into the final game of today which is on sunset coast sunset coast being not your usual light tank map when it comes to trying to play a light tank which is where the versatility of a tank like the alfarum's panzer panther actually comes into play because guess what you can move around, you can do whatever you want when it comes to this tank. It really is a very, very flexible light tank. Now then, uh, we've moved into the middle over here. Uh, it's a nice little spot to begin with, see where the game is kind of going before we commit anywhere. And just seeing what our team is doing, which is apparently sitting at the back of the map in the heavy tanks. Brilliant idea. Um, Either way, hopefully we can counter the enemy team and start to do something because we've only picked up 100 damage so far, which is certainly not what we want. Uh, and you can see we actually spotted five enemies as well at the beginning of this game, and that wasn't just by YOLOing in. It's just by using the view range of our tank. We don't have to YOLO in. You see a lot of light tanks doing this, thinking that, yeah, ah, the only way I'm ever going to spot people is if I YOLO in my light tank. Well, actually, no, uh, that is probably one of the worst ways to spot people because... Often, the people you're spotting are people that can't be hit by your teammates. Uh, and then, obviously, because, you know, the type of light tank players that do that, uh, they will often blame the team for not hitting anyone that they spotted, even though they physically couldn't be hit by the team that they're complaining about. But either way, um, <laughs> hopefully, we won't be doing that in this game. Uh, instead, we're just going to spot where we can see, and any opponents that we typically can spot from here will be opponents that someone on our team will be able to hit. Now, maybe they do, maybe they don't, it doesn't matter, because we're playing for damage and assistance. Playing as a light tank in a general sense, just going for passive spotting, is... Um, it's not a good way to play World of Tanks consoles light tanks because often uh, the spotting mechanics in this game pretty bad um, in terms of actually remaining undetected anyway uh, and often you'll actually sacrifice a lot of free damage that you could have just hit someone uh, without getting hit back um, and obviously if you can get free shots without taking any damage and being able to go undetected again then that is the ultimate gift in this game so if you find someone that's doing something stupid it's probably a good idea to uh, to kind of move and, and try and help someone out or help out your team so that's exactly what we're doing here we've got to trade with some of these hit points at some point if we take a hit it's fine we want to get rid of this type 59-2 who yeah, didn't even manage to hit us or anyone for that matter, including the Tiger on our team. So uh, that's a great result for us. We're up to 1,400 damage done, which is by no means a bad result, but it's certainly not incredible. Uh, but either way, pretty good. And from here, we are now just kind of roaming around, seeing where we can find people, seeing if we can spot someone. And at a certain point in the game, if you've been doing it correctly, playing light tanks correctly... You should be able to find that you'll, uh, you'll see a lot of opponents making misplays, over committing, and that's where you can pounce with a tank like this because of the sheer speed. You can suddenly go ahead and find them in horrible spots and that's exactly what we're doing here. Try and go for a shot on the side, get a little bit greedy maybe, but we move back before I realised that, yep, I was being too greedy and then we get away with it. So obviously... When you're playing a light tank, you want to actually think about this sort of stuff. You want to think, hmm, maybe I should pull back, maybe taking one shell uh, to be able to... Uh, or firing one shell might actually mean I take half the hit points of my tank in damage, which is not going to be worth it. So what can we do? Well, we can not take the hit and use it later on in the game where we may be able to not even take a hit or... Maybe we take one hit and deal five shots instead. And that's exactly what I'm intending here. We're going round the guy and we're just going to cause a bit of havoc. 
Uh, we could have taken a hit there and it would have been a much better engagement. And we've also still got our hit points to go after anyone else in this game. And although this hasn't been the most incredible amount of damage, you can see how playing a tank like this is very much a kind of just waiting game, just making sure that you aren't doing anything silly and just essentially trying to find and pick apart opponents that come out of nowhere. And yeah, when you do that correctly and you're spotting for your team, you can really have some brilliant games. And I think a lot of people miss out on that uh, by playing more of a super YOLO strategy. And it's not even aggressive at that point. It's just a, a, a YOLO strategy where you're going to end up back in the garage much quicker. So yeah, if you uh, have been watching the uh, videos recently, you'll probably have seen uh, the light tank guide that we've done where we look at how not to absolutely fail in light tanks and at least uh, attempt to do a little bit more. And hopefully this will be another showcase of how we implement what we talked about in that video into the game. And in one of the my favourite tanks in the game right now, the Alf Klarings Panzer Panther. If you've enjoyed this video and you want to see some more, feel free to subscribe or check out some of the other videos that we've already made on the channel. Um, but just your viewership and you watching this is more than enough. So thank you very much and I hope you'll join me in the next one. Goodbye.